Hi, welcome once again to our program. I'm Tootie Smith, your host. We will be talking about why your county government is important. As a former Clackamas County Commissioner, State Legislator, and nominee for Congress, I've had the opportunity to delve into county government budgets, functions, taxation, and how they spend your hard-earned money. As a current candidate for chair of Clackamas County Commission, I get asked many questions. Why do governments do that? Why are we taxed so much? Where do I get help when I need it? First of all, a basic explanation of county government is in order before we get to those tough questions. You may not know, but counties have existed in Oregon since before statehood. Each county government was limited in the services they provided. But since there was no state government, those services were vital to the well-being of the residents of the Oregon Territory, which was vast during the 1800s. Oregon now has 36 counties, and if you've seen one county, well then, you've seen just one county, as each county is different depending upon the funding and the location. The primary responsibilities for early county governments involved forest and farm to market, roads, law enforcement, courts, care for the needy, and of course, tax collections. In the 21st century, Oregon county governments face far more complex tasks because of the increasing demands of a growing population and diverse society. Today, Oregon counties are involved in a wide range of important public services like public health, mental health, community corrections, juvenile services, criminal prosecution, sewer and water treatment, airports, parks, libraries, land use planning, building regulations, refuse disposal, elections, veteran services, economic development, urban renewal, public housing, county fairs, parks, museums, animal control, civil defense, senior services, and many others. There is a potential for 68 different services that counties can provide. Let's pull up the graph and take a look at the shared state county services chart that was provided by the Association of Oregon Counties. You will see that county services fall in the red and the blue categories. Those are all of the services that a county could potentially give. By contrast, Clackamas County provides 79 services according to the website clackamas.us. But not all counties can afford these services. In fact, some counties in Oregon have had to close libraries and cut back their sheriff patrols because of budget cuts resulting from a decline in natural resource base like logging, fishing, farming. These are all services that people demand and deserve. Oregon counties team with the state of Oregon and the federal government to provide many of these vital public services in an efficient and cost-effective manner. With challenges facing government at all levels, Oregon counties are the front lines of making sure that vital services continue and the people who need them receive them. Services that taxpayers have demanded are well-maintained roads with swift commute times, a healthy society where homelessness is cured without overtaxation, safe neighborhoods and good schools. This is where solid budget management comes in. Commissioners must be able to foresee downturns in the economy and make budget adjustments in order to maintain present service levels. Commissioners do not make laws like the legislature does, but they can pass ordinance, increase taxes and fees, and make resolutions. Recently, our local Clackamas County government finds itself in a budget deficit in the millions of dollars moving forward to June 2020 fiscal deadline. This unfortunate situation comes on the heels of one of the largest all-funds county budgets in Clackamas history with just over $1 billion. Clackamas County is unique as Oregon's third largest county by population about 420,000 people and growing, and lies within the urban shadow of Portland. Its geographic base is diverse, running from I-5 at Wilsonville, east to Mount Hood, north at Foster Road, traveling far south beyond Malala and Estacada into the Cascade Mountain Range. With 16 cities, over 50 communities of interest, 70 boards and commissions, 
and a police force to cover the 1.2 million acres in Clackamas County. Challenges arise. Clackamas County is charged with maintaining 1,400 miles of roads, not just county roads. That does not include city roads, state highways, and federal interstates. We are all very proud to call Mount Hood and Timberline Lodge ours with robust skiing areas, hiking, horse trails, fishing, hunting, with dozens of lakes, rivers, and streams. Clackamas County sees thousands of tourists yearly who enjoy the beauty not often found in other areas. These are services that the taxpaying public have demanded. When service delivery is slow or not responsible, it tends to anger the public who pays taxes for these services. Let's talk about how paying for all these services work. Most people understand the state income tax and the property tax systems. Your income taxes are paid to the State of Oregon Revenue Department and the IRS. Some of these taxes are then funneled back into county coffers to pay for services mandated by the Oregon Legislature and the U.S. Congress. Sometimes counties don't have a say in what services they provide because the state and national laws are passed, which become mandates. Counties are the boots on the ground, so to speak, for many federal and state programs people use. In addition to income taxes are the many property taxes that people pay. These are called ad valorem taxes, based on the assessed value of homes and properties, and are many times voted in by the citizens. They come in the form of bonds that finance local needs such as K-12 schools, community colleges, special education districts, ambulance, fire, and police departments. Also included are special districts that appear on your property tax statement such as vector control, animal control, library districts, public safety, cell conservation districts, ex extension and 4-H, swimming pools, and metro, the tri-county government. Oh, and don't forget, your city and county government operations. That's over 15 different types of ad valorem taxes that can be levied on a single property owner. Some areas have more. Another form of revenue gathering is fees. Fees are a form of taxation just called by another name. Many times fees are assessed for special use upon businesses for the privilege of operation. Some fees include your car, called a vehicle registration fee that was recently raised by Clackamas County Commissioners at the public after the public voted no by 64 percent. Other fees and taxes include business licenses, building fees, septic system fees, driver's license, tourism, and hotel motel taxes to name a few. That is why adherence to sound fiscal policy and budgets is a primary duty of your county commissioners and it's so important. Management skills of elected commissioners must be superior, being careful not to fall behind, but watching out for the security of its people. What is important to you? What do you want to see paid for by your taxes? All the taxes and fees I mentioned also take millions of hours of labor provided by trained, dedicated staff. Many of these government jobs require special training and a college education. Some of these jobs are so specialized that on-the-job training is warranted. Currently, there are about 1,200 employees at Clackamas County government, not counting for police, fire departments. Additionally, some work is contracted out through private groups and businesses who offer expertise in areas that government can't provide. As Clackamas County moves into a new decade, we need to ask ourselves what services are important. What services are taxpayers willing to generously pay for? Who are the leaders that will listen to its citizens? Certainly, there are basic services we all demand that individuals cannot provide. But beyond the basic core services that account for the health, welfare, safety, and transportation of our citizens, we have asked for too much? Have we as a society been driven by an appetite that can't possibly be satisfied? Have we fallen into the trap of demanding too much of government that we should instead be providing for ourselves? As local and state governments continue in their quest to provide more public services, taxes in Oregon have risen dramatically, outpacing wages, 
and the people's ability to enjoy freedom of prosperity we all desire. The tax burden is increasing. Tonight, I have a very special guest in the room, and she's Robin Jones. She's been a licensed real estate broker in Oregon now for over 40 years, and she has seen a lot of market trends. Robin, I would like you to tell us about how government has impacted the cost of housing as you see it. Well, thank you for that question, Tootie. It's, um, I guess I have been a broker for over 40 years, and since 18, I've been with Oregon Realty Company, soon to be Century 21 Cascade at the end of this week. Wow. Um, over my career, I've mostly worked with first time home buyers um, majority of the time. So as far as taxes go, that's a real um, struggle because as taxes go up, that's part of what people qualify for when they go in for their loans. Um, they have to include those taxes in what they qualify for. So it makes it more difficult as, as taxes go up and houses become more expensive. Tell us about what home prices have done, let's say, in the last 20 years or 10 years, and how more difficult it is for people to buy a home. Well, I know that the first house I sold was $15,000, and... Um, That's really something. Yeah, first house I sold to someone, and then a house I bought, um, I sold in 1985. I think I lost probably, uh, I sold it for um, 25000 and I think I bought it for thirty. So that shows you what the market was doing then, and that was in 84. Um, since then, that house would probably be close to 300000 today. Uh, and I don't know that wages have gone up that much to accommodate that. So you're saying a first-time home buyer is looking at a home price of 300000 or more, and it's very hard to find something lower than that. Yeah, most of the buyers I work with would prefer something um, closer to 200. It's hard to find anything in the Portland metropolitan area for under 250, uh, and most of the time it's between 250 and 300 that you can even find something that's livable and affordable. And something that I've noticed, and we've been homeowners, you know, a lot of my life. What have you seen as far as the overall property tax bill on a house? We used to fund just basic government. Have you seen the amount of taxes increase, uh, the amount of special things that we assess, or has that decreased? No, it, it doesn't ever seem to go on the decrease too often. Um, there are so many things that account for your tax bill. Uh, and, and they're watching it closer and closer. So as properties sell, um, change hands, uh, that assessment goes up. And um, we've, we've just noticed it becomes more and more difficult to qualify people for these things. I think a lot of people might have become frustrated and think, well, I'll just rent or mm -hmm. I'll just lease. But what are the prices of rentals and the rents that people pay? What have those done? Well, it becomes more and more difficult for people to rent anything, even if they're working full time. Um, most of the time you see people uh, partner up so that they can, several of them rent a home or rent an apartment even. Um, it's, it's quite difficult and even there's been many people who have lost their homes in the last downturn that again try to rent because they can't qualify for anything. And the rent prices are just very difficult. So you see families that are living together, that have their children who are adults living in the basement or in the garage, wherever. And so that's become more and more common, dual living. Well, Robin, I want to thank you for joining us this evening and telling us about the challenges that not only a real estate broker like yourself faces in finding affordability, but on the other end, the buyers trying to find something that they can afford to buy. Oregon's primary election is May 19th, 2020, and please search within your heart and soul and vote for not only for your liberty, but that of the generations that follow you. 
If you need more information on any of the topics that we discussed on this program, if you would like to reach out to Robin, you can contact her through tootiesmith.com. Thank you for joining our program. I'm Tootie Smith. I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience, it's a ride that you won't forget and you'll enjoy it every step of the way. Toastmasters helped me land a kick butt job. I sang at one of my table topic speeches and people liked it and applauded. My business is doing great and I'm very, very grateful to Toastmasters. It's been a great experience for me. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters, for giving me so much confidence. Thank you, Toastmasters, for everything. Welcome to an opportunity to take the next step of your professional speaking journey. I want you to be honest with yourself. Have you ever wished you were a star in a television show or at an event where the media is interviewing bystanders and you are wanting to be picked to give your opinion of the event? Or even in the smallest sense, you're at a sports game and secretly hope that your smiling face would appear on that big jumbo screen TV but the jumbo screen always finds the fans with the painted faces. And you think to yourself, maybe next time. Well, what if I can offer you a chance to be on TV? Would you take it? That is what I want to offer you now. I'm Dottie Love, associate TV producer and director. Toastmasters International is one of the largest organizations whose mission is to help improve your speaking skills. And District 7 is expanding your opportunities to do speaking via television. We have four fully equipped television studios and TV Toastmaster broadcasts to over 500,000 homes, plus a YouTube channel. Who knew? We want to invite you to take advantage of using media and television, either in front or behind the scenes. Let me share a few options that you have. First, you can be a guest on a show. Highlight your business or hobby or your community interest. Anything you're passionate about, be a featured guest. Secondly, you can train to be a host on an ongoing TV segment. We will train you for that. Third, what about creating your own talk show? We will train you in, for that as well and give you access to a community media studio to do just that. Or lastly, be behind the scenes, either running a camera or editing shows. You decide which avenue is best for you and our TV Toastmasters team will help you to navigate to get the most out of your media experience. Personally, I've done them all. I started as a guest, went from to hosting, up to directing my own TV show. I don't tell you this to impress you. I tell you this to impress upon you that your personal growth with Toastmasters is directly related to what you take advantage of. And I encourage you to be bold in looking for opportunities to stretch and grow. 
if this intrigues you, or if you have club members who you think that might be interested in this, please contact us here at TV Toastmasters. I'm Dottie Love, and you can reach me or any of us in the TV Toastmasters family at the contact information at the bottom of the screen. You can also find us on the web. Our website is 7512.toastmastersclub.org. Hi, I'm Deb Hart. I'd just like to share with you how appreciative I am of being able to be a TV Toastmaster host. I get to share stories within the community, have people come on the show and educate the viewers, and talk about a subject that I'm very familiar with, and that's health. I encourage you to come aboard and be a part of our TV Toastmasters Host Club. It's fun. You'll have a good time. Have a story that others need to hear? Seeking an audience for your message? Have an experience that can transform the lives of others? Practice your message and perfect its delivery in a TV studio while creating content for regional, national, and international exposure. That's right. Get seen by an ever-increasing audience. Visit TV Toastmasters. Ken Coombs here speaking about TV Toastmasters. As an area director, I see more value in that venue than perhaps some of you do, so I want to share that. Providing a televised voice for District 7, its clubs, and their members not only gives people a chance to come here and get a project ticked off that says speak on television, it gives contestants in an area contest or a division or a district contest at least a chance to come and practice and see what they look like. It gives people a chance to share an important message with the district, whatever that might be. So consider your next speech perhaps being on television. Not your 15 minutes of fame, but your chance to reach a broader audience. <laughs> My name is Charles Shamry. I'm going to TV Toastmasters as an associate producer. I've been involved with the Portland, Salem, Beaverton, Oregon City locations for TV Toastmasters. TV Toastmasters has enhanced my ability to speak in front of a room. Not only that, but has also enhanced my ability to speak in front of a TV audience. Hello, my name is Beth Genley, and I am this year Vice President for Education for Toastmasters for Speaking Professionals, which is a club that I love. Through that club, I became acquainted with TV Toastmasters. I got interviewed here a few times and began to learn how to speak to a camera and how different that is from speaking to a group, how to connect with an audience that I can't see, and how to stay focused on a camera that is not talking back to me or smiling. 
after I did that a few times, I was invited to become an associate producer here, and now I'm bringing people from my club and other interesting people to TV Toastmasters each month and finding out wonderful stories and fantastic individuals who are contributing a great deal to our community. It's been a great ride. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next year will bring as TV Toastmasters continues to be the voice for District 7.